Hey everybody, Chad at Turner's Warehouse, and today is part two of the custom pen making video series. Today we are going to be making the cap and body, uh, doing the threading, some shaping, showing you how they mount on the mandrels, and we are going to get started right now. Let's take a look at the tools we're going to use today. Today we're going to use a few different tools. We're going to use the tenon cutter for the body. We're going to use the niche system with our taps and dies. We'll probably be using our caliper. And then of course our body and cap drill bit. Now for shaping, I'm gonna use carbide tools and I'm also gonna have my lubrication brush and some lube to lube the threads up. So let's start off with the cap. Now I'm gonna give you some approximate sizes of blanks. Uh, I've cut my blank, blank to length here. I've got my cap, my body, and my section, which we're gonna do in the next video. And you're probably wondering why these are a little long. Well, there's two reasons. One is I'm using a bespoke pen blank or a custom pen blank, which are typically eight and a half. And I went ahead and made my three cuts. Now I left it a little long because we're gonna use some of that for holding, uh, for shaping and for trimming, as well as it's just nice to have a little forgiveness. If you mess up, you can always cut it back a little bit. But we're gonna start with the cap here. You can see I've marked two lines so I know where my cap and body should meet. And that way, if I have a color pattern that I want to keep through the blank, I can do that, or at least try to do that. And I'm going to go ahead and move these out of the way, and we'll talk about the cap. So when we look at a cap, it's a fairly simple thing. It's literally just a blank with a hole in it and some threads. So if we draw that out, we're going to have our hole that we drill, and that's going to be one length. And then we're going to have the blank or the material on the outside, however we shape it. And I'm just gonna draw this for, ooh, that's a good drawing. It's a little longer on that side, but that's okay. And then we're gonna have our threads. Now, a couple of things that we're gonna go through when we actually cut this and tap it uh, and all that is there's a few little things that'll make your pen um, a little better or a little more functional in my opinion. And if you remember at the beginning or in the first video, I talked about how we're just gonna drill one straight hole here, right? This is one size. Down the road, if you want to, you know, drill two different sizes to make this a little more snug fit, what that allows you to do is, instead of having this large hole that you then have to go around for shaping, it gives you more room. So you can actually shape your pen a little thinner, you can taper it and things like that. So that's one of the things I was talking about that you can actually do a little more down the road uh, to make it a little more custom or shapely. Now we're gonna do the one hole. First of all, we're using our cap thread. We're doing a uh, M13 here, I believe. And we're using a 12.2 drill bit, 12.2 uh, in inches, in case you're wondering is a 0.4775. So uh, I'm gonna list out all the sizes and lengths for you guys. I'll put that in the description. So our starting sizes for our blanks. Now, keep in mind, this is just a ballpark because I didn't cut any extra off the blank, which I wouldn't recommend you do either. Just kind of proportion it out to where then you can have a little extra. Cap 3.42, body four inches, section one and three quarters. So this was a whole blank that I just cut into three pieces. You can always trim away more later, but like the saying goes, you can't put extra back on if you need it. So we are going to do the cap first. We're using a 12.2 millimeter drill bit and we are gonna drill that hole. I'm gonna actually speak in millimeters here. And this is just a starting point, 38 millimeters you can always make yours more or less. Now, let's talk about real quickly a couple of things, especially for beginners. This is intended to be a beginner series, so we are gonna minimize the steps as far as that kind of thing, the double stepping in the cap and the body and whatever. But I do wanna give you a couple quick pieces of advice. One thing that beginners tend to do is they tend to take a tap and they're tapping their cap threads and they literally run it an inch or more into the cap. Now, in one sense, it doesn't really matter if it's an opaque cap and you can't see it, but 
a lot of caps become transparent when they're thin because you're going to typically thin these out pretty well and you can see those cap threads and to me that looks like maybe someone with less experience did it because they just kept tapping and tapping and tapping so i will warn you ahead of time try to get in a habit of tapping only what you need so i like very minimal threads this is just what i prefer uh, you can see here i have on my body mm -hmm. i have seven millimeters of threads okay on the body so seven millimeters if threads in my cap is that much. If I did an inch, which is very common, you'll see this around, is that much. So you can see how much different that is. And it's just one of those things that you'll kind of decide what you like over time. Maybe that won't bother you, but to me, I always hated when I could see my threads and they were way too far. It just seemed kind of like a dumb move. Now, the other thing I prefer is I always want my cap as short as possible. I hate when the cap is as long as the body. And that's just, again, a preference thing. So to determine your cap and how long it needs to be, wherever your threads stop on your body and your cap will bottom out, you need at least that distance from the bottom out point to the tip of your nib. In this case, it is 50 4.5 millimeters and you need at least that because you do not want to crush a nib if you drill your hole too short and you hit the end of your nib you will tighten it and bend that nib over without even knowing it happened it happens so easily nibs just kind of go boop and bend over and they're ruined now you might be able to fix them but it's a lot of work <laughs> so you need that minimum distance from where your cap bottoms out on the body to this now you can see here this cap is way too big. I made this pen in a hurry. I wasn't paying attention. I just overdid it and it's way too big, probably by a good 15 millimeters, 10 millimeters. So I could actually shorten this cap down quite a bit and I can still do it after the fact and shorten it down. I think it'll look better. That's just my preference. So those are some tips that I kind of think about when I'm making a cap and body. Uh, you'll learn what you like and what people want. So you'll be able to tweak it your way. The last thing I want to mention, and I'll have Amy zoom in here, Amy, if you'll zoom up, is how your cap interacts with your body at the back. So as you can see, my threads kind of go into a higher spot. So it almost looks like my, my threads taper up. And you can deal with that one of two ways. A lot of people will cut a relief at the back of the threads and there'll be a low spot. And what that does is it allows your the threads at the end of your cap to run into that without uh, running uphill and stopping. I actually prefer to have a little chamfer on the inside or a little relief cut on the inside of my cap. And that way when it runs up, it goes all the way, but I don't have that, that cut or that space on the threads when I'm uh, making it because I just think it looks bad to me. It doesn't look um, like cohesive and flow you'll have your threads and then a hole, essentially a low spot, and then your body. So I like it to be more fluid and it kind of runs downhill this way. So that's just one option. I'm going to show you how I do that here on the lathe. It's super simple. You don't have to do that. You could just take a parting tool and cut a relief there and it would work just fine. You can also flip your die and try to run your threads higher, which also works to some regard. Uh, but eventually you do run out of space if you have any kind of a shoulder onto your body. So that's just something to keep in mind. So the first thing I'm gonna do is do a center drill on my blank. I'm gonna drill out the hole for my, my cap. I'm gonna do the tapping of the cap and I'm gonna cut the relief. Then we'll move on to the body. Let me show you what tools we're gonna to use for the cap. The tools I'm gonna use for the cap, I've got the collet chuck on the lathe. I'm gonna use the drill chuck with the drill, the niche system with my tap, and I'm gonna use my carbide tools. Okay, so I've got my collet chuck on the lathe. I do wanna bring out one point again. I might have mentioned this in the first video. Whenever you use a collet chuck, you need to make sure that your chuck, your collet is seated into the nut. So if I just put this collet in here and put the nut on, even though it threads on, it's not gonna work correctly. You need to make sure that your collet is snapped into the ring. See how the collet doesn't fall out? And then put your collet nut on. Now, one other thing, I'm gonna put in my cap blank. And I'm going to drill with the center drill. I'm going to drill the center of this. Now, 
I'm actually going to flip it to the back side first. I'm going to lock this in and I'm going to drill a tiny center hole on the back side. And that is for down the road. So we're kind of planning ahead here. That is for when we go to uh, put this on the mandrel with a live center. We want a tiny center hole for our live center. Now you can see I've got the lathe running really slow. Most of this, uh, these operations with taps and dies and drilling, I'm going to do pretty slow. I've got it running at 400 right now. Whoop, there we go. And I just need that little tiny hole. Now, I'm going to flip this around. The reason I did the backside first is it's just, just a time saver. So this is my side I'm going to actually drill. I'm going to make sure it's all the way in there. I'm even going to kind of lock it down so I don't have any movement. All right. And now I'm going to center drill this side. And you can see I'm locking down my tailstock, turning on the machine, and then drilling my center drill. This one I can drill a little more because I'm actually going to drill the hole with this. So I'm going to loosen this, take out my center drill, and I'm going to put in my cap drill. Now, you can mark um, on your blank, but it's a little harder. I actually like to mark my drill, how deep I'm going to drill it. And I just measure with my caliper and then put that on there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and give this just a tiny bit on my drill bit of WD-40. You can use whatever lube you like. So I'm going to get this going. Once I get it going a little ways, I can go a little faster. But in the beginning, I'm going to go kind of slow. Now I'm kind of cranking it. And then I want to do, every once in a while, I do want to back up and clear it out. I'm going to back up my threads here. Not my threads. I'm going to back up my quill. <laughs> haven't threaded anything yet. Not all the way because I don't want to go to where my Morris taper is floating. So you see there I went to the rejection or the ejection point. I want to make sure I stay locked. But now I can slide this up into the cap and go a little further. And my goal is just to get to this line. Might take me a couple of drills. Once I hear that kind of gritty, I'm going to stop. A little WD in there. I don't mind getting WD-40 on my lathe. If you do, you may not want to use it. You could try something else. But it does just help keep it smoother and cut a little easier inside. And if you have your, it's, I call it a uh, lubing brush because I always have WD-40 and oil and stuff on it, but it helps get the chips away as well. So get that in there, lock it down. And you can see how wet my first few chips are and then it gets really dry. So you don't want to just keep burying the bit in there because what you'll do is you will overheat the inside of that. You'll start to melt the chips and you will actually create walk on your bit, especially the further out you go, you'll create walk on your bit and you'll end up with a hole inside that is wallowed out. And so it'll be tighter where your drills back in the chuck and then it'll walk inside and wallow out your hole. And it doesn't look good, and it doesn't feel good when you're using it. Now, that is the hole for our bit. So I'm gonna move these drills out of the way, and I'm gonna do two things here. So uh, one, we should have talked about this earlier, but that's okay. We wanna make sure our blanks are really square. Now, I put these on my chop saw, which is perfect 90 and, and squared them, but had I not known that, I like to square them after a drill, unless they're just really wonky. If they're really wonky, square them up first. But see, I don't have a whole thing to square. I just have the edge, and I can just kind of lightly make a pass. And I'm just barely touching it, making sure that I'm level and even. And you can kind of hear it, dit, 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 and it gets solid. There we go. And then the other thing I like to do, we talked about that little relief on the inside. I like to take my little negative rake here and just kind of cut a little bit of a 
kind of like a chamfer, but also a little more than a chamfer, a little more of a relief up inside there. And I can feel with my finger that that feels pretty good. And I don't mind if I go a little bit in there. There we go. And remember, what that's made to do is when those cap threads first come into my, you know, imagine the cap is flat and the threads are flat. When they first come into it, what that little chamfer does is gives it a little bit of a, okay, kind of lining it up in there and then they can start threading. So to me, having the threads all the way to the end of the, the cap just make it a little harder a little harder to thread or actually a little easier to cross thread. So that's something to keep in mind. All right, so let's grab the niche system and the tap and get that set up for tapping. So now we're gonna do our tapping for the cap. I'm gonna use the niche system. And I'm gonna load the tap holder here. I'm using the large one. I'm gonna put my M13 in here. And these are kind of spring-loaded jaws. So once you get them in, it'll kind of straighten out. You'll see. Ooh. All right. And then uh, that is all I need to tap this. All right. So if you're not familiar with the niche system, what it is is it's a tailstock mounted system. I'm going to back it up here so you can see it. It just sits in your Morse taper on your tailstock. Slides in like that and you can lock it down. What it does and what's nice about it is it's a precision movement. So if I was tapping this just in a drill chuck, I would have to crank my tailstock or I'd have to do it by hand. And neither of those are necessarily a great uh, option for this. And go ahead and stop this. Because you're just kind of asking for crooked threads or something misaligned, I am gonna give it a little squirt of WD on both. And just kind of tap my my thing here. Now, when I get this started, the nice thing is I can crank my tailstock to get it up close, and it's just gonna go right inside that little relief I cut. And now, if you see here, if you kind of back up, Amy, you can see, I can thread this or spin the hand wheel, and I can kind of push as I'm threading it, and then I can back up, and you see the little curls of curly Q material coming off. We're going right inside there. Now remember, we talked about how far we want to go. We only want to go like 10 millimeters. We don't want to go, you know, an inch up into there. So let's see how far we went. Back it up. Uh, I did not go far enough, but I can go more. And see, you can see all the chunks of thread in there maybe. Get up. So that's all of our cuttings. Well, there we go. That's all of our cuttings from the threads. We're gonna cut it just a little more. Get it lined up here. Now, whenever you go back to, to do more threads, always make sure you're, you're starting off in the right spot. You don't wanna cross thread those suckers. There we go. There we go. And you can see the Thread's really coming off of there. And you want to go forward and back up. Forward, back up. And then there's all of our chunks. I'm just going to kind of slide that out. So we got all of our tappings there. And you can see our nice little threads inside. Now, I do have one thing you want to do. Make sure that you don't have a lot of uh, chips or gunk in there. But I do have another body that I made earlier. And I can kind of just test my threads. So I can put that up there, thread it in and see how they look. And eh, they're a little tight. Well, that could be my body, but actually it's probably the threads. You know what, I need to go a little further. I'm about, let's see how far in there I am. Oh boy, yeah, not near far enough. I'm only about, that far in. So you can see it got tight because I ran out of thread. I'm gonna give it a little extra squirt. And you can go, you know, when you're first doing this, if you just wanna thread an inch and be sure you went far enough, go for it. 
Um, you can always be more careful later, but that's probably enough. So I'm just backing it up. Now, what's cool is, let's say I was running this machine. If I was tapping and the machine was running, I can literally let go of this and it's just going to spin. So I don't have to worry about my threads getting damaged. I can thread it as far as I want, let go, and stop it. I wouldn't recommend necessarily running the lathe with these threads. On a metal lathe, it is a little easier because they're a little slower and you have a little more control. But you can see all my shavings again from just that little extra distance I went. Quite a bit of shavings. Clean that sucker off. And if you have air, you can blow it out with air. Looks pretty clean and our threads look pretty good in there. So let's try this test body. Feels pretty good now, nice and smooth. And you can see it lines right up to the body without running out of thread, even though this body doesn't have a relief cut. So that's what we did that little extra for at the front. All right, that was it. That was the, the cap. Nice and easy. Okay, so that is our drilled and tapped cap. We are gonna shape this at the end of the video when we do the body as well. Uh, but let's move on to the threads of the body. Now the thread of the body will have the cap threads, so they'll be on the outside, as well as it'll have the threads on the inside for the section. So it's uh, just a couple extra steps. First, I'm gonna show you how the tenon cutter works so we can cut a perfect tenon for this cap thread. All right, so now we're gonna start our body and let's take a look at a couple of key things with the body. So this is our body blank. I'm starting with four inches, like I said, just a ballpark. I'm gonna use a nine millimeter bit for the whole thing, but hold off, don't do that quite yet. And I'm gonna go six millimeter or 70 millimeters deep. Now why a nine millimeter bit and why 70 millimeters deep? There's two things you have to remember. One is this pen is gonna need ink at some point and we want it to accommodate a converter or a cartridge and the converter is bigger. So as long as we cover the converter, we know we're good. And um, the nine millimeter is for our inside threads for the section, which are M10. So we're gonna be using M10 threads on the inside. Let me try to write upside down here. And we're gonna be using out here, our body threads are the M13. I gotta tell you, that's pretty good for upside down writing. All right, so we're gonna do our outside, inside, and we're gonna make sure our length is. Now, to do our outside threads, we are first gonna use the tenon cutter. Now, if you haven't seen the tenon cutter, this is a great introduction, and it'll show you just how much easier your life can be. Okay, so to cut tenons on a blank, uh, you, can do a, you can do it a variety of ways. You can just use a tool and use your calipers and measure, and that's nothing wrong with it. Um, we're gonna use this Heinz tenon cutter. This was designed to just make things easier, more consistent, and faster. And to use the tenon cutter, you're gonna need a drill chuck, and you just load it up. Come on now. What am I doing here? All right. And we are gonna need to set the tenon. Now, if you're wondering what a tenon is, a tenon is an area, and this isn't a Webster's dictionary, this is a Chad definition. A tenon is an area that's reduced in size for some purpose, like maybe you have this uh, collet here, or whatever these called, trim ring, or maybe you're gonna cut threads. Either way, you have to reduce it to a very specific size for another thing, so like, where this uh, copper slid over, or where our threads are gonna be. We want it a specific size and it needs to be fairly precise. These threads are M13, meaning 13 millimeter, but the threads are a 0.8 pitch. So they're very small and fine. So if we're off by a millimeter, we're not gonna have threads. They're gonna either be too high and not cut or they're gonna be way too low and be not visible. So with the tenon cutter, you get a set of setup bushings. And it kind of looks like a regular pen bushing, but you're going to, I'm gonna do this in the drill chuck, although I normally just do it on myself. You're gonna loosen these two Allen set screws, and you'll see that this plate can now slide around. Loosen it a tiny bit more. 
There we go. And it actually can come out, but you don't need to bring it out. And then you're gonna slide this setup tool in. So this is a setup bushing for the specific size. The smaller diameter is your setup size. So this is an M13 for the M13 tap and die. And how you wanna do this is you wanna move your cutter out, slide this in, and you wanna make even pressure. And by even pressure, I mean, see how it's kind of cockeyed there or cockeyed there? You want it nice and even with the setup tool. But at the same time, you don't want to push down on this hard into that. You don't want to be bearing it into the aluminum. So I actually want to kind of be able to spin it, but have it just making contact. I'll gently tighten it. Make sure it's good. See, it's a little too tight. I can't spin it. So I'm going to loosen it. And maybe this is where it's harder on the lathe versus if I just hold it. Okay, good. Tighten up the second one. Okay, we're good. So you can't see any daylight between that, hopefully, between the cutter and the setup bushing. You can't see any daylight, but it's also not burying into it because that would be a slight variation. So that looks pretty good. It's a little tight. Oh, nope, there we go. It was my shaft. So this shaft does move and does come out. So there's, you gotta kind of check to see the variability there. The reason we leave these loose, some people do glue them in and that's fine, but a lot of times it's easier to get it out of the body once you uh, are done with it loose. So that's why we leave them loose. All right, so I've locked it down. It is ready to go and I am good. So first thing I wanna do, I'm gonna take this out because I was just showing you all the setup there. I'm gonna bring this over with my center drill. And remember, I wanna center drill both sides. Okay, so I'm gonna put my blank in backwards. Lock it down. I'm gonna drill a slight hole. And actually the blank already has a little dimple from the mold and that's okay. Whoops. Don't start your lathe with the lock on. Okay, there we go. All right, so we're gonna feed this up here. Give it just a tiny kiss. Just enough to get our live center in there and that's it. And the reason we're not going very far is we don't want to really make a big hole because then we're going to eat up more material and we want to have that material to either trim off or use later as needed. All right, so we can flip this guy around. And I'm going to lock this one down just a little tighter than hand. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to kiss this side. And this one we can go a little deeper because this one we're actually drilling our whole uh, tenon cutter and body and all that into. So it doesn't matter if I go a little deeper. Now, for this tenon cutter, we need to drill a six millimeter hole. The six millimeter hole is an identical match to the shaft. So this is our shaft guide hole. And we're gonna be drilling a larger hole later so it doesn't matter that we're drilling this now. But we do need to go at least the depth of the shaft so I'm gonna kind of eyeball here. And you don't have to, but you can give it a little squirt. And we're gonna feed this up close and feed it in. And we can go fairly quickly here. This is a pretty small bit, kind of like a pilot hole. Probably drill this in two or three drills. Get that dry stuff off of there. Colorful blank, all these colors coming out of the inside. And I should note that I know just offhand that this drill bit is not longer than what I'm gonna drill my other one. If it was, I would wanna be careful and not over drill it. So now that this one is done, I can remove my six millimeter bit, put it to the side with these other tools. I can load my tenon cutter back up in here. Now I like to keep my tenon cutter where the cutter is kind of facing me for just visual purposes, but I'm actually gonna face it towards you guys, towards the camera here, at least a little bit. 
And that way you can kind of see it working. Get this up here. I see that's a, that's a nice snug hole. You can see the, the WD-40 bubbling out of it a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna turn on my cutter or my lathe for my cutter. I'm gonna go about 400 speed and I'm just gonna advance this. Now, oh, one thing we need to talk about, how far do we cut this? Because we talked about those threads, uh, I personally like them shorter. I don't like, you know, an inch of threads to keep spinning the cap. Uh, so I only want to cut them about, say, 10 millimeters. So if I kind of eyeball here, I can measure 10 and say, okay, 10 is about on the inside of the, the screw there. It kind of just gives me a visual. So if I fire this up, I'm just going to slowly advance my tailstock and I'm cutting a perfect tenon the right depth just got to make sure I can see the screw hole there yep. builds up quick a little further and that should be good and I can back it off and slide it out of the way so this is where the shaft is sometimes easier to pull out like this versus if it's stuck in there and you have binding issues. So that's just what we found. You can hear that noise that this is a pretty good fit. Gives a little suction. Okay, now this is a tenon, or at least to me it's a tenon. And we have a perfect size for our cap threads. So now we're gonna go back to the niche system. I'm gonna put it back in here. I'm gonna load up my M13 tap into my, I'm sorry, die into my die holder. And we're going to tap this sucker. Okay, so let's talk about dies real quick. So I've got this die loaded up. You can see it's the, uh, it's a one and a half inch. And there's two set screws on the die holder. And there's matching screw indentations on the inside of the die. And you want to get those lined up and snug on each side. You don't want to over tighten it. You can see there is a slash in the die. You can actually squeeze and expand these dies. So you, you don't want to do that unless you're trying to adjust your thread tension. And I can tell you from firsthand experience, if you advance that screw thinking that you're closing the die, what you're actually doing is advancing a screw into a flat wall and you're expanding the die by threading it in. And what will happen, and I know this firsthand, is it will break. And you will take a $200 die and you will snap it in half and you'll be really sad. Uh, so don't do that, because I've done it. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to spray a little fluid on here, and I'm going to spray a little in my dye. And we're going we're gonna to thread this thing. So I'm going to just start by getting the, the niche system up close with my tailstock. I'm going to lock it down. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of push this way gently as I advance the threads into the material and you can see those curly cues starting to come out and then you can see them right there I'm going to kind of give it a backup and what that does is it's supposed to cut and release your threads but I'm going to keep going and I'm going to go all the way till I meet up with the shoulder there and actually I could try to clear some of those out because they're going to get in my way and you can see I wasn't trying to show it but actually this is a great uh, thing for the niche I went to roll my material to clear out these threads or these shavings whatever off the threads and you can see how my whole system just spins nicely so i don't have to worry that die is still in the same spot i left it and now i can just keep advancing it all the way to the shoulder and right there it is i'm going to back it up i'm just going to carefully unthread her and see, I didn't want a lot of threads and I still ended up with quite a lot of threads. So it doesn't take much. That kind of shows you, you don't need a lot. Now, I happen to have my cap here. If I needed to, I could always cut this down, but we may have enough. See, it's starting to get tight. It's cause my, I ran out of threads in here. So what I'll probably do is just trim this down a little bit. And this is why we have that extra little bit. So this is a good lesson. And I'm just gonna take off a little bit of 
material here. Probably need a millimeter or two. That's probably enough. And I want to very, very, very carefully go over my threads again. I'm gonna get out any long stringers that are stuck in there so they don't get in the way. Get this up here. I just wanna find that starting point. Once I find it, it's pretty easy. You can see how clean it goes over. The only place it might really cut is the, the edge might have a little bit of surface tension. And if that's the case, you could, uh, you would cut through it anyway. So what we're going to do, put these guys on here. Uh, whoop. There we go. It's hard to thread a cap on without a section. It's weird. All right. Pretty good. A little tight at the end there, but that's okay. I'm going to do something here. What I'm going to do is take a tiny bit of wet, dry sandpaper. Uh, it's 800 and I'm going to touch just the inside and I'm just going to go over just the tips of my threads and my edge and we'll see how that looks. Oh yeah, much better. And what that does is it just kind of frees it up. It takes off, um, you have to imagine when you're cutting threads, you're cutting triangles that are really sharp. Um, and just that tiny bit of sanding will just take that sharp uh, point and make it more of like a rounded point. And it just makes for smoother threads. So you can see how smooth this is. Like if I spin the lathe, it'll just, obviously there's WD on there, but it'll just slide right in. No problem. All right. So that is the the outside threads, the cap threads. And now we need to do the internal threads. <clears throat> the internal threads are just on the inside of our cap threads and they are for our section. So we're gonna grab our M10, we're gonna drill that out and then we're gonna put our M10 threads inside and we'll do a little test fit. We can use this one. So for our internal threads, we're gonna use an M10 uh, by one tap. We're gonna drill this nine millimeter bit 70 long like we previously discussed, is to accommodate from where the section stops the um, converter. For some reason, that is not 70, it's 72.5, 73. We'll call it 73. Maybe I measured that wrong. Oh, you know what I did? Eh, we're gonna go a little more, it'll work. All right, so we're gonna need the drill chuck the drill bit, our niche system with our tap, and we're good to go. First thing I'm gonna do is chuck up my drill bit. Same thing, I have uh, already kind of like a pre-drilled hole here with my um, tenning cutter drill. Introduce the drill to the body with a little fluid. here and it's going to drill pretty easy because we got that six millimeter you know pretty far down in there so we're just taking off an outer layer so it's actually not that much drilling um, the shavings are going to be very minimal until we hit the bottom see that powder how it starts to change from shavings to powder. That's what we're not after. We want to make sure that, oh, whoa. What I did there is I went too far and caught the drill. So I just got to loosen it up. Okay, there we go. Get out of there. And it kind of loosened in my collet, but it grabbed all that powder and just stuck like, a, like some concrete. All right. Out of there. 
they grabbed hold. All right. And that is our full length for our tap for the M10. Now I can remove the chuck and the drill and bring my niche set back over with my tap. This is set to go. I do want to kind of give this a little cutting fluid, so to speak, with the, make sure that's kind of free. All right. Now, I'll, earlier I talked about doing too many threads on the cap. This one you don't really have to worry about as much because they're generally internal and generally your section can have short threads, long threads, whatever you prefer. Um, but it's done the same way. I'm just going to lock my tailstock down, get this up close, and I'm going to push towards the headstock as I advance the, the tap into it. You can see the curls coming out. I can back them up, keep going. And I tend to go a little more on this because I'm not really worried about the threads because they are inside. And especially this blank is pretty opaque. So I'm pretty far in there, I think. You can see as it comes out how far down it was. So we got some distance in there. And there's all of our cuts. Nice little curlies. Looks good. Now, the um, it's always good to have a tester section and nib. I have a nib that I always test that's I bent it on a cap a long time ago and I always like to use that versus trying a good nib in section in case I got something wrong, but we're going to use this one since we don't have one. And what we, yeah, a little, little wet and some dust in there. What I want to make sure of is that I go all the way in and bottom out the section and I have enough room for the converter. So I'm just going to put it in. And you can see it goes in nice and smooth and it looks great bottomed out perfectly. And if I take my cap, I can riskily go over my set, my, my nib. It looks good. So we're on the right track. We've successfully cut our cap threads outside and inside and our body threads inside. And now we kind of get to do the fun part, which is shape these. And, uh, it's not a lot different from turning other pens other than there are no bushings and there are no guides, but you do have to keep in mind a few things. One is we have a hole that's 58.83 and I'm going to put a line. And what the line is to me is it's saying, Hey dummy, there's a hole there. So I don't want to round my cap off right there and hit that hole because you know, we don't have a lot of material. And if I turn this down a ways, which I probably will, um, we're going to hit that line. Now, same thing here. We went about 73 millimeters deep. So we'll just call it 73 and a half where I stopped. And I'll put a line. And again, you might find a totally different way to do this that works for you. Please do it. This is just how I kind of keep it straight in my brain because now I can put these on my mandrel and put them on the lathe and I know where my hole ends. So I might now, cause I've got a hole for my tailstock and my live center. Uh, I might put my tailstock up and shape where I think the end will be and shape it down. And then I might turn off the whole thing. Uh, I might put these together like this and I might put them in the chuck on one end and a tailstock in the other and turn the whole thing down so I know that they line up. But if I do that, I might not turn off my lines because then I know where my lines are, but I could get most of the pen and then do that at the end with my other. So there's a variety of ways you can do it. And you just really, you're going for shape. So whatever you want to do. All right, so we've got our cap and body threaded both inside and out, our cap threads and the cap threaded and the body threaded as well as the inside of the body for our section. It's also drilled out the appropriate length for our uh, converter or cartridge since this is a fountain pen. Everything went together pretty smoothly. In our next video, we are going to make the section 
And then after that, we will polish and shape these and uh, show you some of the completion parts of the uh, overall pen making process. So hope you enjoyed this. Be sure and subscribe for the next video when we make the section. That'll be number three. And if you didn't watch the first video where we talk about the tooling that you saw here today, go back and watch that because it's kind of important so you can see everything we're using. Thanks for watching.